There we go. All right. Good evening, everybody. As we are having our coaches getting settled in here. Right on. And our guests as well, have them drop in. Get in there. All right. Welcome everybody to a special edition of the Coach's Corner. Uh, tonight we are doing a video review. It's something we've been doing. Uh, we set up for a monthly review. Uh, we have a couple of um, a couple of fighters that have uh, volunteered to have our uh, critique and our snark, and uh, hopefully give them a, a good solid path on what they need to do to to fix their fighting, uh, especially during the COVID years where we can uh, try to give them some concrete things that they can do to, to take this downtime to make themselves better. Um, tonight we have uh, Master Zygmunt uh, from the Mid-Realm. Uh, he's Order of the Laurel. Um, and we also have Lady Tomaris, uh, also from the Mid-Realm. Uh, so thank you both for joining us. Uh, tonight we're joined by uh, Viscount Sir Sagan, uh, Duke Thorfinn, and our esteemed colleague, uh, Duchess Sir Helga, um, who, uh, who I, I kind of, kind of came up with this brainchild, uh, idea with, um, she is absolutely, in my opinion, one of the best analysts we have in our sport. I always love hearing her, uh, her opinion. And I always love seeing her face when I tell her how really good she is at this. <laughs> um, I cannot wait to flat snap you. Uh, oh, oh! I can't, I, I can't wait for you to do it. So many, I, right to, to the moon, Alice. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> to the moon. <laughs> Careful, big right. boy. Right on. So, um, some caveats and disclaimers before we get started here. Uh, as as we uh, look at the video review uh, for for what we're doing, um, it's important to understand uh, first off that we we did the the, the first one of these that, that we did. We did actually a, more of a, um, a class on how to do video review. Um, that uh, video was done November-ish. Um, so go back to the uh, Coach's Corner YouTube uh, channel and look at that. That'll give you an idea. That was more of a how-to. Um, and that, that kind of gave some perspective of, of the methods that we use to actually break these things down. And then the last couple of ones we, we've done here have been more of a practical application um, with uh, with some people that, that were kind enough to send in videos. Um, we all look at these videos from a perspective of we learn more from our failures than we do our successes. So you're going to hear us talking about what these fighters are doing wrong. And we need to be very clear that we are not here to tell them what crappy fighters they are. That is just the best way that we have to get them better. We start with what with what they have the failures that we that they have, and we we are going to tell them the ways in which they need to correct those things. So again, we're just not here to just tell people how bad they are, right? That's totally not the point of this. Um, we've had a couple of questions come up throughout these video review sessions as well, especially um, these ones we've done in the last couple of months about um, why we've chosen unbelted fighters uh, for this review. There's a number of reasons for it, um, but one of the biggest reasons is that these fighters at this level, at the unbelted level, most people have very similar problems. So what we're going to see coming up in these videos is going to be applicable to a much wider audience. Okay, if we're looking, if we're doing a video review of of, of Thorfinn, um, you know, I mean, we can we can only spend so much time in an hour saying, "Nice fight, your grace." Um, the, the stuff that Thorfinn needs to fix is very nuanced and is not 
not applicable to a, to as wide a base. So that's kind of why we decided to do just on belted fighters with this. Um, we've got two more series or two more um, episodes of this set up after this. Um, and after that, depending on, on the interest, we may, we, we may kind of venture out a little bit more, but we wanted to start with these guys to give them, um, the best access they can. Uh, and again, showing problems that, that are, I mean, there are more people that are going to look at this and say, that's my problem too. And that's how I fix it. Um, one of the other reasons that we wanted to stick with unbelted fighters, uh, is because there are a lot of fighters in out there who feel like they don't deserve our time and nothing can be further from the truth. Um, everybody deserves our time. And, but there are people out there that, that think, Oh, well, they only do analysis for big fighters and for Dukes and stuff like that. And like, and that's just not true at all. And we wanted to take some of these unbelted fighters who might otherwise think that, that they wouldn't have access to us. And, and let people know that this is what we do. This is what we love doing. And we wanted to make sure that some of the unbelted fighters out there felt comfortable with being able to say, pick apart my stuff. Right. So just a couple of, uh, you know, just like I said, caveats and disclaimers and kind of how, what, what angles were, were coming, coming through from this. So uh, Thorfinn, you got any initial thoughts? Uh, not yet. I mean, you know, I think that you covered pretty much everything I was thinking. I do agree that it's really important that uh, that we help the unbelted fighters in this particular way because the, it gives them opportunity to get access to uh, pretty spot on observation from a you know a group of really good fighters and and I think that uh, this information if we don't get it out to everyone is just lost and so let's make sure we get this and share this information it should always be the, our main goal is to share the information. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because Thorfinn's girlfriend just said we should totally do a video analysis of Thorfinn. <laughs> um, Sagan, you got any, got any initial thoughts? Yeah, I'd love to do a video of, uh, analysis <laughs> of Thorfinn. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, well, good evening, everybody. And welcome. This is uh, my first foyer into this show. And uh, I hope you come away with one nugget or more. As his grace said, positive outcome. That's what we're after. Uh, if, if you have questions after this, contact us. As his grace also said, we're here to assist all of you, not just some of you. Okay. Yes, we're here to help Thorfinn too, but we're here, you know, you, go ahead, task us, contact us. Uh, we've used a term in some of our shows called, if you lose, don't lose the lesson. <coughs> That will be applicable here. The other thing to remember about this, though, if you don't understand the words coming out of my mouth or any of the coaches' mouths, say so. If we're using a term you're unfamiliar with because we're accustomed to it, that's not going to help you at all. So we'll come to a common language as we go through this. We'll work through what we see and come out on the other side. Well, I know uh, Thorfinn and I have both trained with Sagan and, and, he, and Sagan could tell that we didn't understand what was coming out of his mouth because we just like had blank stares. Well, yeah, the other things, but we don't talk about those. Yeah, things. Like, yeah, can't nobody understand what's coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Helga, any initial thoughts? My initial, th uh, my initial thoughts are just a fangirl over everybody that's here real quick. Like, oh my God, I get to do this with you guys. Um, but also to thank the Unbelts for continuing to put up videos and to do this. This, this is an opportunity to come with an empty cup uh, and get some pretty, some pretty interesting feedback as well. Um, and you guys are putting yourselves out there in a very public spotlight to do this. Uh, and so realistically, the, the brave ones are the people that are submitting videos and asking to be a part of this show. And so I just wanna say thank you for that because you're not just gonna make your fighting better, you're gonna make everybody else's fighting better because they're gonna see the same mistakes they make in your videos. And because you're willing to do this, they get to also have the corrections. So like spot on, thank you very much. This is super cool. Uh, so the first video we're going to have, uh, we're going to do some basic introductions here. So, uh, uh, Thomas, would you be kind enough to just give us a basic uh, intro of your fighting background to this point? Uh, yeah, I'm Thomas. I'm in the middle, originally from Calentier, and I've been fighting for about three years, so I'm still still fairly new. 
Uh, what part of Kenlich area were you in before? Um, I was in Bois d'Arc, which is like the southeast corner of Kansas. Uh, so is that down by, uh, is that down by Springfield? Um, it's close to Springfield. We would go to Springfield a lot. Yeah, nothing but a bunch of hacks down there in Springfield. <laughs> I say that because I've worked with some of those hacks. Um, no, a bunch, bunch of great guys down there, uh, down that, down in that area. Uh, and uh, Zygmunt, would you be kind enough to give a little introduction? Well, yeah, I'm uh, Master Zygmunt, Order of the Laurel. Uh, I'm from the Middle Kingdom. I'm an armored combatant on and off since 1997. So if you lump that all together, uh, about 14 years. And I fought in about 20 to 25 prep tournaments. Cool. And the one we're going to show is my first final. <laughs> yeah, right on. All right. So um, without further ado, then, let me go ahead and. So <clears throat> we are using uh, YouTube videos that these guys have, have submitted. Uh, if I can. Screen two. There you go. So we're using some YouTube video. Um, so we uh, we use YouTube because it, this is one of the most accessible tools that we have available, um, and uh, it has gotten uh, so much better. Uh, I think we're going to skip that one, right? So <clears throat> you know, I've been using YouTube for at least ten years, um, and it's. Uh, it's gotten a lot better and a lot easier to use. Um, and I am going to, uh, before we before we get to, too deep into this, um, I need to share uh, something that I found out just yesterday. I posted this to the Coach's Corner. So we use um, hot, uh, sh keyboard shortcut uh, hotkeys uh, to do forward and, forward and back uh, and change the, um, uh, change the speed that we're watching at. And uh, I had been, you know, looked it up on, I did the Googles to look it up. And then I accidentally found out that if you hit a question mark on uh, YouTube, it will give you a list of all the keyboard shortcuts. Nice. Uh, so as you're watching these things, you just hit the question mark um, and you'll see, like we got the toggle play pause. That says K, but um, you can rewind and forward, front and back. Um, the... Uh, Play pause is actually space bar. I don't know what they have there. Um, so anyway, this is how you can find the uh, the instructions on, on how to do this. Um, one of the things that, that we do is we're going to look at it live uh, full speed. Uh, we're going to look at it half speed, and then we're going to do frame by frame. Um, <clears throat> and that gives us the frame by frame gives us detail, and the half speed gives us context at a rate that we can follow because some of the stuff that we get in the frame by frame doesn't tell the whole story. Um, so anyway, that was just something that, that I discovered the other day uh, that I really wanted to share with everybody because uh, it's, it's just a great tool. And uh, you know, there's, there's so much great, great content out on the internet um, up on YouTube. Um, go, you know, I mean, Thorfinn was saying the other day that, you know, he watches, he watches, uh, you know, hours and hours of, of YouTube fighting videos. We all do. Yeah, um, every night. <laughs> yeah, and we're, we're we're all happy to look at videos. Um, I, I did some just the other day for a friend in Lockhock. Um, that this is what we do. We love doing it. Um, but you know, go look at some of the best fighters in the world. Watch what they're doing. Watch the frame by frame. Watch the half speed. Um, and and learn how to do this. All right, so the first fight we have here is, um, I'm gonna try to see if I can do, do full screen on that. So this is Tomaris. Um, and so we're gonna let this play and what we're looking for is ideally, we're looking for, so the Tomaris is here in the uh, purple and gold uh, doing some, some buckler fighting. What we're looking for is we're gonna, we're gonna play to the point where we get uh, a, a blow that is recognized, um, ideally, ideally something she gets struck with. So we'll, we'll keep that in mind. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll go from there. So 
So it looks like you get hit in the body there. Is that coming through clear for everybody else? Just out of curiosity. No, it's like really choppy for me. I'm getting like I'm get a big yeah, jump. me too. Every five frames. Yeah. Yeah, about that. Exactly right. I need to reduce that down. Hmm. Nope. Yeah, I'm looking at that on the live feed, on the Facebook live there, and it's it's pretty sketchy. <clears throat> How's your bandwidth right now, Sean? As far as I know, it's okay. Uh, do we want to watch it at uh, full speed to see if it'll actually just flow? Or that is full speed. That is full oh. speed. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay. So it's really significantly bad then. I thought yeah. you were watching it at a uh, at maybe like half speed, and then it was choppy as well. So yeah, that's that's full speed. Hang on a second. No, no, you're good. I'm just gonna. Uh, I don't. I I don't computer man. So I gotta pause there. 10th <laughs> century good. 21st century bad. <laughs> uh, Sean, worst case, I can take over running video again since I've got the the hard line. Yeah, you want to do that? Yeah, here. Can you can you bump it out and keep everybody busy while I get it loaded? Yeah, you got the uh, you got the playlist right. I will in just a second. So something I wanted to talk about about your first fight here is I enjoy this kind of a stance you're doing, which is a kind of a buckler out with a sword up. It's more like a historical uh, style. I thirty three. Yeah. And uh, it, it looks like it's got a lot of, I mean, it, it's obviously a very effective style. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been used in the actual time period. But um, yeah, I think that uh, if you could do a little bit of work with it, I think that you're going to find that that style will help you a lot. So I think what's part of this is that you're, you need to be able quicker or, or at least uh, recognizing where the blow is coming in. So that way you can slide the hand over to cover each zone, right? Because mm -hmm. you've got the, what you're doing is you're using the buckler out in front of you. Uh, zone style, which I mean, excuse me, cone style, right? So the further it is from your body, it creates a cone, which makes uh, large sections of you disappear behind it. And then having your hand out like this, you're doing like the opposite of a hanging guard. You're doing like an upright guard. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I think that like having just being able to tell where your opponent's going to attack will allow you to defend with that sword. But go ahead, Helga. John, you have to give me co-host or host. Do, 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 do. But it was something I, when I watched earlier today, I, I was, I wanted to comment on it since we have a couple minutes to fill here. <laughs> you can share all participants. I like your kit too, by the way. Cool. Thanks. Or turn on screen share for everybody. Yep, I did. Looks like you should be able to work that. Okay. Aha, got it. Bing. All right, let's do this video review. Thank you. Okay, you guys got it? Let's try it out. Full screen. Okay, let's see how it plays on my machine. Uh, somebody watching the YouTube or the Facebook live feed to make sure. Yep. Okay. Is it clear for everybody? There are less gaps now. Yeah, significantly. It looks. Yeah. It looks pretty good. Okay. Oh sure, for sure. Blame the Duke. <laughs> I am blaming the Duke, but now I got to pull out my little hotkey. <laughs> you know, you can hit the question mark, that'll pop it around. Yeah, then it pops it over the screen for everybody. This is that first fight, so. Yeah, that's definitely coming across better. Yeah, good. Sean, do you want me to go to the second fight of this since that was her first fight? Yeah. Okay. You want to back that up? Yep. Looking at my cheat sheet. Give me a second. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to slow that down. Learning how to do all this. 
This is the reason why they don't have me run the thing. I couldn't even, I couldn't even do any of that. So I'm just happy that somebody knows how to do some of it. <laughs> uh, Sean, you want uh, 0.25 or 0.5? Uh, let's go point, uh, go point five. Okay. And let's back it up right before she gets hit in the leg. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. That's good. I'm going to back that up one more time. Oh, I think I see. All right. So back it up again and pause. All right, and then you should be able to just hit the uh, arrow keys to go frame by frame. I'd have to hang on. I'm gonna. No, it'll still jump it. I uh, know arrow. Um, the left, right, up, down arrow keys. Yeah, left, should right, up, down. That's what it just jumped it with. Yeah. That's what it says. Uh, try the. the uh, Try the period and the comma. Ah! There you oh. go. Oh, success. So that's backwards. There you All right. Okay, you want to start? <clears throat> um. So beyond the first, okay. So sure. Uh, let me stop sharing for a moment so everybody can see our big faces. Um. So the first thing is one. I'm actually relatively impressed hearing that you've only been fighting for three years with some of the stuff that you're presenting right now. So we're going to start off with the positive of like I would not have guessed that you've only been fighting for three years. So there's one. Now after this. We're gonna get we're gonna get a little harsh. Um, one of the things that's going on is there is a I watched this video a couple times before we actually started, so a little bit of a cheat sheet here. I'm assuming the three of you fight together on a pretty regular basis. Yeah, the guy I'm fighting in that is my fiance. So okay, <laughs> yeah, we every fight single lots. one of you have the same problems, which means you're training <laughs> the same problems into each other. Gotcha. Um, and so one of the, the the big problem that we're gonna start out with, which isn't the reason why you got hit, but the big problem that I'm seeing, and we'll run through a couple of these videos so everybody else can see this, is you guys are actually starting the fight within range. So you are not actually preparing for the fight outside of it, which probably led into you getting hit here because basically he got a free, like if you think of like clickers and like uh, initiation, he got the first initiated blow. So you came into his range and he got to choose where he was hitting you mm -hmm. um, because you had already made a completed thought cycle uh, into the fight and well in range. There was nothing you could do to actually react to him at that point in time. And all of you guys are doing this. Um, so that's the first big thing um, that I'm gonna point out is one, your fight is starting in range. Two, your body mechanics are very often on. Um, they are more developed than I would expect out of somebody who's only been fighting for three years. But as soon as you get pressure, you start fighting from the belly button up. You are not engaging, you are not actually engaging your hips or driving off your legs, which is not allowing you to adapt in the fight after you have had pressure placed on you because that, that's going to start you falling in and out of the fight. Um, you've got a pretty nice upright posture, but this is saying that you're being very core lazy in your fight and you're relying on your upper body to generate power. This is where you're going to get number three. This is the thing that I yelled at my computer like four times while watching the video. Mm -hmm is you can see that you are, uh, has anybody explained the 90 degree rule to you? It kind of sounds familiar, but. So the 90 degree rule, once your elbow yeah. breaks 90 degrees, and this is okay. a general rule, the more advanced you get, the more rules you can break. When you're starting fighting, they should be like tomes written down in stone for a while. Okay. 90 degrees, your body will not change direction of your stick after your arm breaks 90 degrees because we start losing power. The further our arm is out away from 90 degrees, the weaker the elbow joint is. And so our brain will naturally try to preserve this joint. And so right now in your fight, you're starting in that A-frame with your arm already busting the 90 degrees. So everything you're mm -hmm. doing, you're telling 
you producing a tail because you are coming back to 90 degrees to generate power before you go every single shot and so this is saying that you're actually starting in too much of a stretched out position for your body and this is compounding with the fact that you're starting in range you're being core lazy and now you don't have 90 degrees so now every motion you're having to regather yourself into the next thing so you're adding stages and steps in time all right Thorfinn. Also, with that same thing, what she's saying is, uh, I think I went another way of saying that is, you're sapping your strength uh, with every one of those things you don't do, right? Mm -hmm. By not connecting with the ground, that's going to take a lot of the strength power out of your blow, right? And your core is going to generate the most. And then you have up here, you have another fulcrum, which you're, you're breaking the fulcrum, so it's out far from your body, right? Mm -hmm. So you really have, you really sapped your ability to create power with your shot. And, and so that could be, you know, if you hit, you start fighting guys that have uh, a little higher calibration, you're not gonna be able to hit them hard enough. Right. And, and, and so this is something that by, by maintaining these kind of like ground to core to body, you know, to arm and, and out blow type blow idea allows you to generate power. I'll talk to you sometime about a, a small circle power generation stuff. And we can, we can talk about that, but that's a whole nother thing. You got to learn a good fundamental set and then we can then add on to that, okay? Mm -hmm. But I think that that's a way that someone, um, you know, I find uh, I'm not a real big guy, right? And so I find that it's a way for me to generate uh, enough power to be able to kill just about anybody, um, while 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 using those other elements, okay? Mm -hmm. So it's there is, that's I think kind of both of us are saying the same thing, but I'm trying to say it in a different way. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sagan. All right. Well, first thing I'm seeing, and I'm I'm dwelling on three years. Uh, as as uh, my uh, sister said, for three years, okay? Let's, uh, one thing that I, I do want to address is we talked about reactionary fighters and action-based fighters. Mm -hmm. An action-based fighter basically has a mental component that drives to a physical component that drives to an action, where a reactionary fighter has a mental and physical, but in, those in couple will generate a reaction. And that's some of the stuff further down the road that you may find help. The same things basically that Helka and Thorfinn did in that what I'm seeing is there is a lack of a way. Yep. So you can froze up a little bit. Okay. Right. It wasn't just me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, he froze up a little bit. Okay, so, uh, so when, while he's uh, while he's coming back in there, so um, kind of what uh, some of what Thorfinn and, and, and Helga were talking about uh, for for what you're doing, um, uh, stick mechanics. Uh, so my question is, when you do pell work, where does your sword start? Um, I think I work? do start with it farther back. From the shoulder. Like I don't start with it as far out as I do. So right. I, I just never was conscious about it before. Right. So, so yeah. Is this because when, you're using a buckler and you're feeling vulnerable right now? Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is yeah. there is always Probably. a there is always a disconnect between what we do in pell work and what we do in combat. And the biggest reason mm -hmm. for that is self-preservation. It's one thing when you're throwing shots against a pell who's not trying to block you at something else entirely when you when, when you get into a fight and, and you become concerned about what your opponent is going to do to you, um, your, your mechanics um, falter. Uh, and that is a very, a very natural thing to have happen. Um, it is complicated by the fact that what you are doing in your fight is not what you're doing, not what you have trained your body to do in pell work. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. The, the, the way that you're going to need to fix this, uh, oddly enough, is to fight in combat the way you do in, 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 at, at pell work, um, because that is where your mechanics are coming from. I'm guessing when you do pell work, your mechanics are much better than they are and what we're seeing in, 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 these, in these fights. And again, that all gets back to the same thing we always get around to, victory conditions, right? Um, when we get into a, a sparring situation or, or any kind of evaluation, um, you know, we're trying to, um, um, 
we're, we're you know, we end up having this concern for doing well mm -hmm. as opposed to doing right, right? When yeah. you when you execute things correctly, um, uh, it, it, things just work better. Um, but you, you know, again, what however it is. So I'm a big believer in pelvic from the shoulder because I think the the mechanics, um, I think the mechanics are more sound when you understand stick mechanics from the shoulder. Uh, the stick mechanics from the A-frame and from a for sword forward position will make a lot more sense to you um, because it is a variation. I mean, typically when, I, uh, when I'm fighting, I'm not right on my shoulder. I'm just off to the side. I'm not out in front like this. I'm off to the side here. So even when I'm, when I'm fighting with a buckler or a center grip, anything, uh, I will do, as Thorfinn was talking about earlier, I will do cone of defense with the buckler. So I'll have the buckler out um, and that provides a cone of defense, which gives me, which means I can cut down on the blows as they're coming in before they really have time to develop. That puts my hand in a position where I can throw my blows just as I do in pelt work. And I can throw from, from this, from just off to the side here, I can throw any of my basic shots. So I can get to everything. Um, and I can still kind of come across and do some sword block to, to kind of cover things. Um, so if you're going to do a, the, the sword forward thing, like Thorfinn was talking about, what you're doing is, is kind of like the I-33 um, stuff. Um, this is also the method that uh, Duke Timothy of Arendelle uh, uses. Uh, Timothy won crown, Ethelmark crown with the sword and buckler doing exactly this where it's got that the thing out there. But you need to understand the mechanics from the shoulder before you can have that variation because as, as Helga was saying, all of your mechanics and all of your stick rotation has to rotate through the shoulder in order for you to be able to, to, to throw an effective strike. And essentially what happens is when you put your hand out here, now you're just trying to put your hand forward to make power and that, and it doesn't work. Does yeah, you, have to, you have to learn how to walk before you run. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, one of the things too, when you're talking, we were talking, Sean was talking about doing some pell work. Make sure when you're doing your pell work that you're using your shield defensively and, and in, in proper position um, as if you were fighting, because you're going to drill this mm -hmm. into your muscle memory, which will pay off dividends in the long run. Okay. So never do bad form just so you can hit the pell, right? Okay. Always make sure that you can learn to move with your shield, you know, fire with your shield everything about that is as if you were fighting an opponent right this way you you just burn that into your 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 you know your brain and your muscle memory so that way when you come time for real fighting those things are easier for you okay uh someone else now i'm gonna say it's probably worth us watching a little bit of her uh more of her fighting video uh and then go from there i've got a couple things that i would like to go over with the shield style you're choosing uh and i've got a couple questions for you but i think that it would be worthwhile watching a few more frames of you fight uh in this to get a better understanding of what's going on and i would love to get like a couple questions from you about what you're seeing now that you've gotten this feedback from us yeah. everybody good with that yep yep yeah, yeah, cool, cool. yeah let's move on to me he's back let me learn how to share the screen again yeah i know you cut me off sean that's right. When we get back together, pal. Sure it's be just mute you. <laughs> the jokes. Okay, I'm moving this to normal speed so we can watch a couple fights. And and we really didn't get to the part where you got hit in the leg, but uh, we'll we'll be able to get to something else here in a minute. This one goes by pretty quick if I remember correctly. But you can actually see consistently all, all of them have the same issue. Yep. Like they're all breaking that, breaking that and then like leaning out into it, taking their own power. And so they're getting this big wind up through. And moving the buckle around a lot. Yeah. I want to get to that here in a minute. 
Yeah, it's interesting that there's an offense-defense lockout in a lot of these movements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think with the buckler, it's it's really kind of a, I mean, it's a, it's a zone style thing too. You got to kind of be know you're safe to put it there, and that it's going to cover a lot with a with that cone. Um, you can't move it around a lot because what ends up happening is that any kind of half movement, it's off t- uh, block, and then they can you know cut you. So. And aggression never hurts. Just aggress really hard. Sean, just tell me when you want me to pause on it. I'm just going through until we find an interesting chunk. Yeah, if you if you uh, you see something that, that jumps out, I've got a couple things, um, but it's more of an in general uh, feedback set. Um, why don't you go and stop right there? Can we pa- yeah, can we pause that? So uh, I'm gonna. One of the things I'm gonna jump on right away here is uh, the what what uh, they refer to, especially uh, in many martial arts, but uh, particularly in judo, they refer to live toes and dead toes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you see how you're sitting with your feet, um, where the tops of your feet are sitting on the ground. Unless you're both hip. Are you hip? Uh, look like legs, but I don't think that so. Look like legs to me too. So that that you're right, you know, This is curious. Yeah, so um, I, I, I typically I fight with my toes curled under, um, and what that does is that gives me a better shooting platform um, with where you're sitting with your with your feet, the tops of your feet sitting on the ground. Um, you don't have as much balance, and it's easier to push you over, and you can't generate motion. Yeah. There's there's nowhere for your for your you have nothing to push off on. You know, we we talk about um, you know the power in your shots coming from the ground, right? Well, that's true coming while you're sitting on your feet too. And it comes from the ground because you're able to push off on your toe and then rotate at your ankle, rotate it at, at your knee up to your hip and all that. Um, it's something I, uh, I, I see a lot. Um, like I said, there's, you're going to get pushed over easier, but more importantly, you can't generate power as effectively um, with this position. Does that make sense? Yeah, it, it's an it's an easy enough thing thing to fix. You just basically you sit down so that your so your toes are are underneath you, and you'll you'll find very quickly. And basically, what you're doing is you're creating a tripod. Yeah, with your between so you have your two feet together with your toes curled under you, and then out to your knees. Those are the three points of the tripod. Um, that just gives you a better shooting platform uh, to to be throwing your shots. It so, uh, significantly more muscle groups in order to move. Right. If your foot's laid out flat like that, where it's on, like on the ground, you can't access your, your even your, your ankle. So you're starting yeah. basically at your knee. The, if the other way allows you to access all the strength of your feet, all the way through your calf and into your your mm-hmm. your uh, thighs and up. So, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go completely off the feet because they, they have covered this a ton. Uh, I'm going to point something out here. Both of you guys are very square uh, to each other. And Absolutely. Face- uh, so we're going to go with uh, next concept I'm going to introduce is have you been taught about facing the threat? Maybe. Okay. I know. <laughs> yeah. So the thing that's going to kill you is your op- basically there's a there's a little mathematical line and it's super fun to do is between the sword hand and the shoulder mm-hmm. there's a little dot which is the reason why they say track the elbow. It's actually the line in between that you track and you control in the fight. That is actually the threat in the fight that is what you need to face gotcha. to control the fight this is going to give you control of the shortest fastest line for anybody to flat snap you which is our quickest shot um when you are facing your opponent dead straight like this you are actually giving them the flat snap line for free you must now take an action to block any shot that they throw and so if you start the fight by facing the threat and what's going to kill you because i am never going to kill you this human being right here never going to kill you <laughs> this however 100 percent will gotcha. um, and so if you actually turn your body just those like five to ten degrees to face that threat you are shutting down their shortest fastest line to you and you are now controlling it um, and so this is going to probably be the next like big jump in your fighting is when you stop facing the eyes and you start facing mm-hmm. the threat Right. And we, as little omnivore creatures, we have both predator and prey <laughs> behaviors, um, depending on how we've been raised and everything else like that. There's a bunch of social uh, social BS we can go into, but we're not going to. Is, but we have been taught that you face the eyes, that's a predatory thing. 
you hang on to that, you control it. It's not actually what's going to happen in fighting. You actually have to train yourself to start facing towards the weapon in that, that point, mm -hmm. that magic little point that happens between the shoulder and the hand. And when you control that line, you will control the fight. Um, does this make sense? Because I just threw a really large concept at you. Yeah, no, that may, I've had it explained in like other ways, but okay. not exactly like that. So that makes a lot of sense though. Um, one of the things that can help in training, um, it's a little bit of a cheat. So you want to make sure that it doesn't uh, turn into a crutch is when you're training, have your opponent put a really bright colored piece of tape on the inside of their elbow hmm. so you can watch it. So give yourself a visual so you can start learning and training the behaviors. It's basically like click and treat yourself um, and give yourself that visual spot while training. Slow the fight down too. So you can, instead of trying to correct it at like 110 miles an hour where your brain is trying to like threat, don't get hit with stick, need to move feet, shit, where's my shield? Slow it down into slow work and think about how do I properly face this without overcorrecting myself, without overturning my body? Are my feet behind this or are my feet with me in this process? Mm. Start slow, go big. But that little bright, that little piece of bright colored tape is a really good cheat. Awesome. All right, uh, Sagan? I must ask, since you are fighting in this form here, do you do power? Mm -hmm. And do you do this, full, this position? In power? I, I haven't. I haven't thought about doing that, but I would yeah. I, I would ask you to consider that for a couple of okay. reasons. Number one, a pedal is somewhat of a really good gauge of your power generation because you're striking it. And if you find that standing up you do you do okay in power and you go into this form and the pedal goes, you know, or you just feel I am not striking with power that will answer some questions. I also noticed that neither one of you are in range. That means there's now gotta be a body movement. So, and then I'm assuming the body movement is to come up because from there you are in somewhat of a tripod to shoot. Is, is that correct? That's, yeah, that's normally my instinct is to go up. Right. Yeah. And, and the gentleman, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that's a gentleman, just leaned forward. Mm -hmm. Nice try. Nice try. You triggered very well towards his head, but you're not, are you in range of that? Can you no. range, can you range from where you are on the ground? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty tippy range. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Touch yeah. that nail yeah. coat. So, you catch the mail coat in the kind of the sleeve and it just, because you're so far at range, it just absorbs all of it. Right. And again, as we talked about with bucklers forward, it can miss range you because if your focus is on the buckler rather than the helmet, then you're getting misinformation. Mm. Nicely tried, but notice as was mentioned, your opponent came up and you're barely on your tip. Yeah, right. It was a good trigger to that target area. It really was. Six inches closer and you would have had it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if yeah. the power was there. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, Helga? Uh, so this is possibly a classic training mistake actually showing up in your fighting. You're reading his threat and not understanding your own. Uh, and okay. so as a slightly short, so you're shorter by almost six inches in this fight uh, in reach. Um, and one of the things is you're very aware of his range, but you're not aware of your own, which is probably saying that he mm -hmm. smokes you at that range on a relatively yeah. regular basis. So your brain has marked, this is the line of the threat. And like, if I stay <laughs> just outside of it, I might survive this. Um, yeah. and what, what you need to do is you actually need to break past that line into where your range is best. And again, this will probably naturally happen when you start facing the threat. It's going to give you more success and more time to get into where you are actually in range. Um, because this is like, you are just on the edge of his measure. And I'm watching this again, repeatedly in the fights of you are just staying at the edge of your opponent's measure, but just about that quarter inch in to where they can <laughs> pop you and you can't get to them yet. Um, right. So start, start working on this in your training and get past that zone a little bit. Don't dive past it, but start working yourself into that zone by controlling them and controlling that threat line. And you'll find that you're going to be much more successful, much quicker. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's threat versus opportunity. Yeah. Um, you are, on both sides. yeah, well, you, yeah, you are uh, giving too much mm -hmm. credit to his threat 
while at the same time not providing yourself enough opportunity. Yeah, you're not so, allowing yourself a voice in this fight because you, you, you're you basically, he has, a, like you said, four to six inches of range on you, right? At this point. And that means that you can't really hit him at all. And so mm -hmm. he, ha he has, he can just kind of swing at you, right? Okay. If you come in and to your attack range, uh, you're still going to be able to use the same kind of cone defense. You're still going to be able to do, but now you're actually going to be able to threaten him. As of yeah. right now, he feels pretty safe out there, right? He can do those type of, you know, big open swings because he realizes that your range is just a little bit back and he's out of range again, right? Mm -hmm. The other thing, when they talked about being square with your opponent when you're down like this, guys, is that if you present this wide target to your opponent, there's a lot more opportunity for them to hit you. By, by, hit, by blading out in an oblique type target, you have literally stripped inches of their target range, right? Uh, just because it's not there anymore. You, you do not present a, a target for them, okay? So if you're going to, like Helga said, face the threat or go shield forward, do not go square forward. Square forward gives them too much attack options, especially with that small shield, which has very limited um, uh, failure rate. Right, your your ability to any kind of miss block is enormous with a buckler, right? Uh, so you want to make sure that you you do not go square with your opponent when you're when you're like that. You're not square with them when you're standing anyway. So yeah, and and, and part of part of what we're talking about too by by encroaching that range and taking that range, even if you lose the fight, at least you're part of the equation. Yeah. And right now, you have you're, a voice in the fight. You you are pretty much giving him everything. Yep. Right. <laughs> So, um, so we, we got to, we're about 6.30 here. Uh, so uh, uh, Sagan, um, let's have you give uh, top three things that, uh, that Thomas can work on. Uh, well, no, number one, as we, as we talked about, and I think I may have, have been cut off at that point, uh, you can do offense or you can do defense. But what, from what I'm seeing right now, and again, three years in, what I'm seeing right now, the ability to attack and defend at the same moment, can you know, throughout a fight, isn't there yet. But in three years, I would not think it would be. Okay. But the idea of blocking and striking at the same time, that's that's something an introduction stop giggling you. That's something you can bring in, and we do have drills for that kind of thing. The the big one for me was was when you were squared off on the ground. Okay, once you square off, I believe you probably have more of a power generation issue than when you're standing up. So I would pay attention to that. Overall, though, my number three, keep on going. Keep on going. I, I, I like what I saw. Thank you. Thank you very much. And throw blows. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and defend. You know, throw blows is you can't, if you, if you don't throw blows, you can't win, right? Yeah. True. So I mean, I, I think that uh, that your full, the whole fight was really good. Um, I, there was a lot like you know where you're at in your career. I think you were doing an excellent job, uh, but you have a lot of growth to do. And um, and I think that uh, you know focusing on uh, successful power generation and uh, also learning uh, how to move with your shield while you're attacking mm -hmm. those things alone right there are going to uh, shoot you uh, to the next uh, plateau. Everyone, you go like this, right? You ramp, you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn. You forget some stuff that doesn't work no more. You, and then you apply the new stuff. Then you plateau for a while, then you ramp, right? So this is going to shoot you up to the next ramp, okay? I mean, next plateau. Thanks thank a lot for sharing, okay? Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, Helga? Uh, I'm going to say facing the threat, which we just went over, uh, is going to really change your game. Uh, I'm going to mirror uh, Sagan and Thorfinn on this. Of You need to go back to your basics on your power generation on both your pell work and then applying it within the fight. Uh, the, the new one that I'm going to add, though, is start making places to play in your fight, which is going to allow you to apply the other things that they brought to the table. So that like throwing while blocking, the facing the threat, the changing where your foot position is, the not squaring up, is take some of the pressure off the full-time fight, go to three-quarter speed if you need to, go pick up a set of wiffle ball bats. Put yourself back into a play mode. This is going to help you ramp up faster because you're going to be willing to risk more because it's going to cost you less. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, for me, um, it's going to be uh, stick mechanics. I mean, you, you're obviously doing the pell work, right? 
Um, and that that was clear to me from the first time you sent me in any of this video is that that you are doing the pill work, right? So I'm guessing you're doing at least five days a week, right? Four to five when I work out, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you doing four to five days of pill work a week is, believe it or not, is far more than what most of your contemporaries are doing. So that's a good place to start. Um, but again, there's that disconnect between what you're doing in pell work and what you're doing in, uh, in, in live combat. Um, mm-hmm. So try to make your, com- your live combat closer to what you're doing in your pell work because that's what you're training your body to do. And my guess is what you're doing in your pell work is far better mechanics than what we're seeing in combat. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and a lot of that, again, go- goes back to redefining your victory conditions the reason that we vary from the reason that that disconnect exists and that the way the reason we change from what we do in pell work is that self-preservation and that all goes back to a concern for winning and losing right yeah you've been you've been fighting for three years um you know newsflash uh you're you're supposed to suck at this (laughs) right Mm -hmm. so but if you can if you can stick to what you're doing in the pell work um first off those mechanics work right? They're good, solid mechanics. They will work. You have to have faith in that. You have to believe in that and you have to execute that in, in power work and, or, or in, in combat. And I think you're going to find that um, you, you have more defense than you believe you do. And when you, when you add to that, Blocking and striking at the same time. This is one of the things that I got I got from Sagan is this idea that so some of what Sagan's talking about with that disconnect between offense and defense is this this idea of my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, right? Okay. You yeah. throw, I block, I throw, you block, right? We take turns mm-hmm. doing this, right? It's you know, and this is something that uh, that 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 Zygmunt should be familiar with because uh, this is something that, that Dag talks about is it's never their turn. Mm. It's never somebody else's turn. It's always your turn, right? Yeah. Um, so as, you know, and that goes back to what Thorfinn was saying: throwing, throwing more shots, um, being part of the part of the equation. Um, so honestly, what what I'm seeing, is, I mean, m- my recommendation for this is: when you're fighting, even with this buckler, put your stick on your shoulder, put your stick where you start your your oh, mechanics yeah. to begin with. And yeah, you're going to yeah. be surprised at how much you really can cover. Your defense is probably way better than you think it is. Just yeah. put your stick on your shoulder and believe in the mechanics. Yeah. Yeah, it's one more thing, if I may. Yes, I am. Thomas, was there anything we said that was unclear? Um, the only thing I wanted to clarify was like with the fighting square, when you <laughs> face their sword, do you turn everything like your shield to face their sword or because I, I would think that would leave your side open a little but I think, I think so Helga's I about, about to give a demonstration. Helga's about to answer that for you. <laughs> yeah so you have your you're standing like this in the fight you can see mm-hmm. me square even my yeah. legs are square underneath me so I'm okay. going to pretend my mic <laughs> there, there we go sorry I got to get to the right is a threat I'm actually going to turn my body to that mm-hmm. threat. See how like now part of me is going away in this process. This is a mm-hmm. terrible, ca- terrible camera angle to do this. I can also do it on this side. I'm mm-hmm. square. I'm now mm-hmm. facing the threat. You can actually see me visually go away in this process. I can right. still look dead at the camera, but now I'm saying, and this gets rid of this flat snap. But next time I'm, I'm going to bring my shield up so we can do this. But if I'm square, See how my shield is, and you got this big Mm -hmm. L-shaped flat snap area right here? Mm -hmm. All I did was put my foot forward a little bit and turn towards that threat, and it goes away. It is now gone. Yeah, this is a... I've gotten rid of their first motion. And it's also an introduction to real basic footwork. Yes. So what we're talking about is by changing your front foot, right, it presents to, like I said, an oblique target to your opponent. Instead of being square, you're now angled and you just become thinner to their threat, mm. right? Okay, and yeah. If, especially when you're fighting with that buckler and things that have to be cone defense. Remember, the further it's out and with that oblique body like that, you really present significantly less target, right? Yeah. And, and his grace uh, was saying that you can learn to from there, from here, you've got your shoulders, you know, sword back. You can, you can sword defend if you have to, right? Um, and then using the, the, the buckler as a, as a as still in that cone style, right? So it comes out, the sword comes out to block, right? Or even underneath the leg block, mm-hmm. right? 
um, but but by not presenting a wide target for them, uh, it gives you more um, fudge room. Okay, yeah, so you, you, yeah. you can your defense can have slight failures, right? Like a, a hockey goalie, right? As he goes back towards the net, they come out of the net, right? And then they skate backwards. Because what mm -hmm. they're doing is they're literally coming out to cover everything and then they're failing on their way back, right? And then, yeah. they, and then that's how they defend. So every time they break through the barrier, you change, okay? Yeah. All right, All right. one more thing from Helga there. Sorry, I just, I just had this light bulb and I need to share it with you. When you're standing square like that, your body's in neutral. You are not actually loaded to throw a blow. So you must then make a motion to throw the blow. So that, that squared is the reason why you're disconnecting from the belly button up. And so if you actually okay. start facing the threat, you're going to automatically start loading your body for that yeah. flat snap. And then you can figure out your recovery and a reload from there. But you're going to put yourself already in an offensive position and mindset versus having to get there out of neutral. So instead of like having to stomp the clutch and then shift gears, um, mm -hmm. you're going to already be ready to go in first. Awesome. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. you know, one of the things that that again, another one of the many things that I've learned from Sagan is we execute in combat the way we train ourselves in practice. Why well, do I have um, a feeling we're going to go over an hour and a half tonight? That's eh, possible. Hey, well, what, what led you to that? <laughs> oh, <I don't> know. <laughs> um, Fighters talking. You know what? One of, one of the things that Navy SEALs are famous for saying is uh, the more we, we sweat in combat, the less we bleed in, in or the, the more we sweat in training, the less we bleed in combat. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're doing the work. So uh, execute what you've been doing. Okay. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, so Zygmunt, now that you've uh, seen us abuse uh, poor Tomaris there, now's your, now's your chance to, to bail on this whole experiment uh, if you need to. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Bye. Okay, hey, we'll be seeing you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you're all assholes. I'm out. <laughs> well, at least one of us. Right, at least uh, yeah. <laughs> wanting some change for sure. Oh, yeah. All right, Helga, you want to bring up? Uh, so Let's the fight this. that we have for Zygmunt is uh, Crown Tourney uh, Fall of 2019, uh, and considering this is uh, considering. Uh, Felix, who who won this set of fights, is still king. Uh, I, I I I classify this as the most recent video we can get for you. Um, I'm going to suggest we play all the way through to the end of the first fight and then back up. Uh, yes, from there so we can yep. see the Sounds completion. Good. Yes, okay. sounds good. Talking, talking, talking. Um, can you speed that up so we do uh, full speed to begin with? It's on full speed. Is it? Yeah, I'm still getting a little bit choppy. Yeah, me too. Uh, let me, I might have it set for 1080p. Let me drop it down real quick. Hang on one second. I do. Hang on one second. Let me back that back up. And who is who on the field? Uh, so Zygmunt is in the purple on the left side, and Felix is uh, has the checky with the sun. Okay, that is the first fight. Let me slow it down. Wrong one. It might be a little smoother if you drop it to 480. I don't know. Uh, is it is it still coming across choppy at all to you guys or no? Yeah, it's not as bad as it was the first time. Uh, it's it's coming okay. It's it's coming across okay on the uh, live feed. Okay, cool. No, as long as it's good. okay on the live feed. Should timestamp this.
Yeah, you see that bit right there? <clears throat> All right. Do you want to pause that right there, Hugo? Yeah. How far do you want me to back it up? Uh, actually, about uh, back it up about 20 seconds. Okay. Or 20 frames, whatever it is. About there? Uh, yeah, that should be right. So what we're looking at, what I'm looking at here is um, the the way you're 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 in and out, okay. Um, so you 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 are making an attempt to advance the fight. You're advancing a range, and then all Felix has done is really just accept your advancement. He hasn't thrown a blow at you. Mm -mm. He's just. He's just um, accepted the fact that you're engaging the fight and he's given just enough um, response to that. that You completely bail on what you were doing. Does it make sense? Um, now, the third time you did it, it looked like you might be trying to kind of game him a little bit as far as trying to trying to get him to trigger on something. But the first two times that you do this, and I don't know if we're far, far enough back into this, um, but the first two times you do this, it really looks to me like, okay, I'm going to step into range. Oh shit, he's fighting. And then you, and then you back out and then you do it again. You're like, okay, so I'm going to come into range. Oh shit, he's fighting again. Right. And all he's done is accepted the fight, right? You've declared your intent to engage combat. And he said, okay. Right. And when he did that, you bailed. Does it make sense? Sure so this kind of gets into yeah. intent a little bit. Um, this this talks about uh, deliberately manipulating range so that you when you establish range, you are deciding that you're engaging in the fight. And I'm not sure where you were at in in what you were doing. Uh, Helga, can you do a little slow motion on that to see? I, too, am curious. Why did you bail? Um, to be honest, uh, once I didn't know where I was in the tournament until I made the finals. And then once I did, it kind of messed with my head. And I didn't have enough time between in the break between semifinals and finals to regain my mental foothold. And that's what you part of what you're seeing here. Is I'm trying to do it on the And I know I know it's not well enough. And uh, so I know he's fast. So, Helga, can you back it up just was, a little bit? I think I was keen on it. I was worried about his speed. A bit too. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think that's exactly what you're worried about. Um, yeah. There's a point where you, as you step in right here, you're on guard and, uh, and you look like you're going to throw a blow. And then he just does kind of a downward like movement like this, yep. which then you, you, your power goes straight to like down, like see what it did just right there. You drop it down to your body. Right, you 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 kind of shut everything down like that, and just cover. Um, well, and I'll say I'll say uh, Helga, go ahead and back it up because he actually does this three times. Was, I know this right? last exactly. Yeah. This is the last one. This yeah. last one that that we see actually looks like he like saw something. Yeah, and and then tried to make something yeah. of it. He was right. like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna That's try to fake this right. right? There, but the it, it looked but like the first running. the first two times he goes into this, it like it was not yeah. the, it, it, there was not purpose. Right. Yes, that, like that, on the first that last one was... where I dropped my guard, I think I was seeing a like a, a face thrust, and I was and I aborted it. Uh, yeah. Right. Oh, you you uh, were seeing that you're self delivering one. Yes. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yes. So that that changed that blow. There was a moment where you come in, and you look like you're about to start to attack, and then you just like like pull back too. That's the first mm -hmm. one I think. Yeah. And 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 that one, all he did was just kind of present. Right. Yeah. That's what I was like. Helga, you got something? I'm. Um, so I'm going to come at this with like a mental headspace uh, versus oh. there's some mechanical stuff in here that's going on, but your mental headspace is such a waste of energy here because you are mm -hmm. so tight and you're coming in and you've got this tell, like it's three bounces and then you're going to try something, three bounces and you're going to try something, three bounces and you're going to try something, whether that's bailing or going in. Uh, but this is what I'm going to classically call the old bull and the young bull trying to fuck it out. Um, 
because that's what's going on here is like emotionally you are so much more invested in his reaction than he is in yours he is going to accept it and then punish you for it versus you're trying to force his reaction and this speaks to the difference in um mental attitude in the finals right now of felix is actually owning the shit out of you right now because he is just letting you waste your time and your energy to give you to give him how he's going to kill you yeah. okay so sorry for that being that blunt but this is definitely one of those times where mechanically you're going to produce enough of a threat in this but emotionally you are not at all like he doesn't care you did like enough you did fake him out here enough to get his shield drastically out of position oh yeah absolutely and well, and, and if you would have if you were more in the position of fire from and have more uh i would say just confidence in yourself right here like you said you're you're in your head you know, a matter of fact, he's in your head so much that he's built a kitchen. Bingo. He's cooking dinner, yep. right? But the, you could have cut his legs right off, right? It, from there, if you would have been uh, in a position of fire. Mm -hmm. Instead, what you did was you, you abandoned your fire. His, he, he, but he bit whatever that was, and he's up super high now. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's – he's – the rest of the fight, he's maintained a really good kind of defensive stance. And this is, like, the one opportunity you had. You could have hit him in the ribs, for God's sakes. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's – a lot of this is um... – you are trying to you're, you're you're trying to make him do something um i don't know that you know what you're trying to make him do you're trying you're just trying to make him do something uh and he's not falling for it mm -hmm. uh and that's yes as Helga was saying that just goes back to the fact that you know this is no less than his third time in the crown finals um you know he's he's really comfortable with where he's at and you're trying to you're trying to elicit a response. You're trying to get him to do something. Um, and, and I don't even know that you know what you're trying to make him do. Does it make sense? Um, oh, and so it's, it's a lot of it is, is a lot of this is comfort level. Um, you know, I mean, I give you full credit for trying something, you know, mm -hmm. like we were talking about Tom mm -hmm. Riss, at least you're part of the equation. Yep. At least you're not just standing there letting him do whatever he wants to do. Right. You're, you're at least making some effort to, to, to try on this. Um, the, the, the mechanics in this are definitely uh, definitely sketchy. Um, you know, the, the, the shot where that last one where you got him to respond to a thing, once he did respond to it, you were not in a position to, uh, well, you might have been in a position to strike at it, but you, your, your timing on it was, was all off. And I think it was kind of one of those things is like, okay, I'm going to kind of throw this thrust out there and then see what happens. And then by the time, you know, like Sagan was talking about earlier, there's the, there's the action and the reaction. And, you know, it's like, and you, you were like, you got him to respond, but you were so far behind on the, on the reaction after that, that it was, oh, there's his head. Now I can throw. And yep. by the time you were actually throwing that shot, it was gone. Yeah. You're not recognizing the secondary and tertiary uh, attacks that you could absolutely have done, right? right or or even like a, a fake to set up something else uh and so what, what you've done is you presented like a, a initial attack form and then just kind of just didn't really follow through after that and and this is i think this is pretty normal um for you're like you're like you said you're you're out of your head space right and that's because you're, yeah. you're like holy crap i'm in the crown finals uh he's been in crown finals many times it's a very comfortable place and i was telling some other fighter the other night that when you are in this place it's it seems impossible until you do it right until you actually do win crown it seems impossible right because yeah. it was impossible until then um but he's now it's entirely possible for him he's already yeah. done it so yeah. i think that uh, you know if you were to learn um, um a focus a way to uh, focus right before the fight whatever that is it's a salute it's a praying to the god mars or whatever you're gonna do right do that thing that sets you and it, it doesn't matter if you're at fighter practice if you're in the crown finals or whatever where you're at this is the trigger that says i'm here now i'm present and i'm in this fight if you can start working on one of those and while you're practicing then when you you can apply it when you get to those tournaments and allow you to to shed that uh that kind of headspace thing quit caring about winning and and focus on on uh, just clearing your mind okay Sure. I'm going to jump over to Sagan, then Thank we'll get you. back to you, Helga. All right. So I, too, am curious. I mean, of the three movements we've seen, 
Only the last one had intent, but we've already addressed, and you have already spoken to us about it. Mentally, you are not in the fight right now. You're, you're coming to it. However, your opponent is taking, to, taking you seriously. He really is. He is giving to you. And that, that is the gift right there. Now, as, as we go forward in the fight, we'll see how it turns out. But uh, I'm curious, after you finished this fight, were you still mentally out of the water? Um, a little bit, but I, I kind of had a minute because, well, let me back up. I still kind of was, but um, I have been working on that, that focus thing. I've actually been learning from Ron Walder, Duke Ron Walder. Uh, he has a little bow and a salute that he gives, and I used that all day up until this first fight, and I didn't really, the second fight, I think, is my best fight of the okay. three, and I, I did it there, and I got a little more centered, um, so I, uh, I'm sorry, I lost my, <laughs> all right, uh, let's go back to Helga, what, yeah. what, was, what was your question? All right, so I'm actually just gonna, I'm going to pick on mechanics real quick because we have a really sure. good like shot right now of somebody that is loaded for a second intention and somebody that is not. Um, and this is actually, this is a really, really good way of looking at the fight. Um, you can see that Felix is on a uh, neutral in his uh, lead foot. He is moving with his secondary foot and he is loaded through, you can actually see he's mechanically loaded from his heel all the way to his sword shoulder. He, that is wound right now. <laughs> Versus yeah. you are not. And so as you're addressing what his threat is, you have not loaded offensively at all. And so this is where uh, I'm piggybacking off Thorfinn in the secondary intention. You have a primary idea. And when that doesn't work, your fight goes to hell in this throughout, throughout the video. Uh, verse, you can see that Felix is loaded for the next thing. So he's always ready for the next intention, the next intention, the next intention. Versus what you're doing is basically stop starting your fight. Right. Uh, which speaks to the OODA loop, which means you yep. are getting misfired and you're restarting the entire thought process every time in the fight. Right. Um, and you can actually see it like in the picture on the screen right now on how you are standing. Um, and so this is something to watch for in your fights and in your videos is when you're catching yourself like this, you should be in balance right here. There's actually no reason to be out of balance at this point of the fight, but you are. And so this is a great spot to choose a correction and to put yourself out of balance like this on the Pell and figure out how in the future you would correct this stance or come back into balance where you can now give an offensive threat with a defensive property. Yeah, um, uh, kind of along those lines, um, uh, you know, that the, the, the stop start that she was, she was talking about and kind of the flow of the fight. Um, we all get an idea about what we want to have happen in the fight. Um, right. you know, we get, we get, you get a plan and then you throw that plan out there and maybe it works through, maybe it doesn't. Right. One of the differences between good fighters and great fighters is a good fighter may be able to recover from the failing of their plan. The great fighters will be able to capitalize on the nature of the failure, mm -hmm. take the way in which it failed and make something out of that. And that goes to what Helga was talking about, about, about flow of the fight. Um, cause, because part of this is when you do throw this shot, you're all in, right? Whatever, whatever shot you're throwing, that's it. You're, you're all into that. And, you know, and yeah, you know, we got to have some commitment. We got to be able to, uh, you know, you, you got to be able to execute. Um, but, you know, you're banking on this one thing working and when that doesn't work, you have to recover, right? As opposed to you throw something out there and, you know, what happens when that shot fails? How are you going to recover out of that? How are you going to capitalize on, on the nature of that failure? Um, that's something, one of the things I talk about a lot is uh, what I refer to as natural return path. Um, natural return path of a blow is determined by how a shot impacts or does not impact. Right. So if I'm throwing, a, if I see a flat snap and I throw haymaker, you know, moneymaker flat snap at this guy, depending on the way in which they block that shot is going to determine how that shot gets back to my shoulder. And if I, if I hit it, that's great. But if I miss that shot, 
there's plenty of times where I'm going to come right off of that. I'm going to end up getting a kill that I could not have gotten any other way except for the manner in which my shot failed. Does that make sense? Sure and does. that's just following that natural return path finding out what the stick wants to do based on how what you wanted to happen didn't happen right right because it's it's it, it would be great if people would just walk in and, and just take flat snap to the face right that would be handy yeah um, you know but it doesn't work like that and when it doesn't work how are we going to adjust to that that's something that Thorfinn was talking about earlier with, with Thomas and that whole flow of the fight and, and a lot of what you're seeing with what Felix is doing is he is allowing the fight to develop naturally and organically. He's following along with the fight. And this is, again, one of those things I talk about. You have to let the fight happen without having the fight happen to you, right? <laughs> yeah. don't, don't, be a, don't, don't just stand there and be a victim of the whole thing, but allow the fight to develop naturally and organically follow the flow of the fight if that makes sense and i know this really kind of zen concept um but that's kind of you can see a stark contrast here where felix is letting the fight happen and you're trying to make something happen all right uh you want to move on to the next fight or actually let's go ahead and finish this okay, finishing this one at full speed and then we'll move to the next fight yep uh was this three did it go three fights segment yeah, there's, there's three there's three okay. fights. three of five Oh, it's three or five. Okay. And they stay the same weapon form all three fights. All right, Dan. So, <laughs> what was Sean? What, I think that I saw this uh, thing that this applies to. Uh, it was a quote from a boxer, um, uh, Jack Johnson, from back, you know, the very first heavyweight. Uh, Holy heck. Person of yeah. color. Uh, <laughs> a fighter wants to turn his opponent into an assistant in their own ass whipping. Yeah. And, and I think that that <laughs> is like a really, really poignant thing to think about is that allowing your fighter to, you know, not dictate the fight to you is to be participatory in their own ass whipping. And, and that's like, you know, getting out of position and, and all of those things. That's what we were talking about just a minute ago. Yeah, that's exactly right. I want to control it, delete this damn Marshall. Uh, so, okay, actually, I think this one, you get a better angle on the second. On the, on the second video, yeah. On I the want to play video. through and then I'll pick up the second video so we can watch it from uh, the other side. Yep. Yeah, that's a better view on the other side. Especially that part there where... Um, where Zygma's trying to be the flying Walendas. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been an earthquake. <laughs> also, by the way, I want to say that I love our marshals and they do an amazing job. It's just I do, right I do in front of the screen right now. when I throw some blows, but... Oh, he heard you, Helga. Wow, <laughs> magic. So I really like the first half of this fight and I don't like the second half. <laughs> I'm talking about the flying Walenda routine. Yeah. I remember thinking at the time, I saw Felix do a move similar to that, and I thought, well, let's see if that'll work. And I just kind of threw that out there to see if it'll stick. And that was, you know, I was already lost by that point. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. I, you know what? I didn't see these. I didn't watch these angles, guys. Yeah, I'm, uh, this should be the second fight right here. Yep. Uh, no, it's about two minutes. Uh, yeah, it could be. Uh, no, 42 seconds in, we're probably at the second fight. All right, yeah, yeah. It what? Looked We'll watch this one anyways, because it's actually kind of cool watching him do that duck. Is all the ducking a convention back where you I was about to say, everybody does it, apparently. Oh, my goodness. You're oh, talking about like this, this like, low squat thing he's doing? Yeah. Covers like, uh, that's I, certainly that's something. That's a Felix thing. That is a Felix thing, for sure. Oh, okay. I mean, he's got it because he's got that really, I, I hate to say it, a stupidly shaped shield. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, if you're going to do a heater... Put a point on it. You might as well, right? So this is the second fight. There we go. Yeah, the first one was the yeah. You actually touched his helmet right there. I think. I did. Yeah. Yep. And they were. Uh, I think they were too close. Let's see. Yeah, I can't remember what happens. Right off. I remember, I remember seeing it. Is that he's fading? I think. And you. Here, I'll slow it down. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Yeah, he's fading, and you and you trigger too late. And so it's just basically touches, and he it's got that bassinet, so it just glances right off, if I remember correctly. It did. 
that you know what that was a good uh, setup too that offside head it felt authentic it looked like a real three and release and there you go that yeah, was yeah. no step forward yep yeah that was that was all that was all arm yeah yep yeah your hip was behind your arm and that's too bad because i think that if you were if you had like a switch to a right leg stance you would have hit him really hard right there because yeah. what he did was he pushed and then he comes back and resets like this to look yeah yeah I mean, it was it was the right it was the right shot to throw, uh, but they yeah, just didn't right. have the mechanics behind it. Right, exactly. You you saw mm -hmm. the shot and and you threw the correct shot there. That's yeah. Okay. Uh, so I'm gonna plant a little flag in the ground, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> that timing was great. What actually met? Look, I didn't drop the f bomb there. I'm super proud of myself. <laughs> right now. Um, what messed that entire thing up is when you met with force. So when you when you guys decided to actually lock horns like the two bulls, trying to figure out whose pastor it is, because that's what that was right there. I'm just gonna call it a spade a spade. That was ugly as fuck. Um, <laughs> drop the f bomb there. Um, if you had met that pressure while keeping both your offense and offensive and defensive weapons with you you would have been able to take the step but because your offensive weapon got over the top of him you basically bear hug him in this process of trying to you know trying to figure out who's stronger in the process if you had actually kept your tools with you and moved laterally to turn him you would have automatically set yourself up to deliver that flat snap in a clean manner while also being able to chase him while causing the same havoc that you did by tangling with him. You actually yeah. gave that chunk up because you met force with force versus manipulating it. Yeah, there's a, there's a, it's actually a very clever trick is to when someone comes at you with like a heavy press like that is to instead of go against it, which is your natural urge, is to just let it go, right? Then they become uh, overextended. Yep. Uh, and, you could, and then you could have just rolled out to the right and then probably because of that shield has the weak point is right here, right? On a heater, right? Always roll to the right and throw that back snap. I think, but I mean, yeah. I mean, you got you got pulled into a, a shoving match. Well, and it's it's a lot of what we were talking about from that first fight too is, is you know, there, there's there's some good here in that you are seeing things. Yeah, uh, you're just, absolutely. you're just, you're either seeing them at the wrong time or by the time you, or the mechanics that you're putting behind what you see um th those mechanics don't support what you're seeing but being able to see what you're seeing there, there's some there's definitely some good to that yeah and if i may on the mental side so you did tie up voluntarily all right and in in what my sister and my brothers have said you know there's going to be a release yep if you can take control of that release in that okay what are my percentages where's he going to go and you set your feet you get your body position in play and you let him start to release, but you don't let him fully go. And once you let go, you're on him. Yeah. You are just on him. I think, I think, I think Sig is 100% right there. I, yeah, I agree. But it's one of those things. That, that was my and, intent with that, with that tactic. Cause I don't think I'd seen anybody do that to Felix all day. And I remember thinking beforehand, I said, all right, I'm going to try this thing. This is, this is a thing I've, I've done otherwise and been other times and been successful. And I remember thinking, I'm going to give this a try and see how he responds to it. And I just, as, as his uh, Excellency Sagan remarked, uh, I was not set up properly for the follow-up. Yeah, so right. thank you. Right. And I think one of the things that for him that triggered the release was you turned, either he voluntarily came off of that or you turned him. Because after the turn, he starts to draw. Right. And it's like, okay, the decision's made. I'm leaving. So. Right. All right. I'll go. Let's keep playing that out. Yep. Yep. Yes, please. Uh, so you had a little bit of pre-programming your fight right there. You just you decided what was going to happen, and you just launched it into that, regardless of, of how you responded to it. Yeah, this is a intent guide. When I talk about not having a plan, um, this is key 
to really like high end fighting is to, to stop trying to formulate a plan. Like you said earlier, like, oh, I've seen other people do this to him today. I thought I would do the same thing. Uh, instead, you should be just reacting to the fight happening Absolutely. Instead, of, instead of having a, a, an idea that if I see this opportunity from these things earlier, um, what that does is it creates a false um, like idea that he's going to do that. And yeah. let's, let's say that he's not going to do that, then suddenly you're, now your plan is fucked. And so yeah. instead, what you should do is in, try and be, and this is a thing we all try to work towards, and I've mentioned this in other uh, uh, videos that we've done, is to just try and be present in the fight. So what you want to do is you want to be actively a participant, uh, meaning like you are having your voice, your, uh, you're picking your tempo, your range, and all those things like that. But then you're also just being there like like uh, uh sean said earlier uh that he was letting the fight happen organically to him so he doesn't have a plan he's he is presenting his fight and then re you know reacting to what you present to him yeah and so this is, this is a huge thing it's, it's bad enough to have a plan it's even worse to have somebody else's plan right you sure as fuck don't want that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, I mean, you you have to be your own fighter, and you have to you have to execute whatever your whatever your fight is. And there are definitely things we can learn from from other fighters. But um, anytime you're trying to be something other than you're not, it's going to go bad. Yeah. And 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 you know, on the other side of that is whatever you execute, as long as it's an accurate reflection of who you are as a fighter, um, you you can be a, a lot more happy with you know how the fight went when you know that you know, win, lose, or draw, I put out the best fight that I'm capable of. I think this is where, where your, uh, where your leap comes in here. Okay. Let's see. There it is. Yeehaw. I just had to hit pause on that for That's right. posterity purposes. Your Dukes, your Dukes of Hazard moment right here. That's a real Tigger move. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So what was your mindset as you were throwing yeah. this? Yeah. I was you had to, you so have I, you have not done this in any of these other fights so there was clearly something that happened right here where you thought you were going to get something out of this i was i have never done that before or since so yeah. <laughs> what i was thinking i would do is i would throw that shot and i would either get a deep uh off onside no the deep offside head like so i would land at the back quarter here or a deep uh offside body that's where I was trying to go with that. Okay. Yeah, because he just, I mean, once once everything went up, he just blocks high. Yeah. And now he's, you know, now now he's gonna take advantage of the fact that I mean, I mean, I mean, obviously all your balance is is everywhere. Um, so where wherever it is you land, he can hit you pretty much wherever you want. Hmm. It's also like a total triangle yeah. right now. Oh I mean, yeah. So rooted to the ground. He is He's got his power loaded, his yep. block done. He is ready to explode on you, uh, and and you're landing with this on one toe, <laughs> so yeah. it's you're you're in a pretty bad spot. And you see that stick flex around your thigh. <laughs> yeah, once once yep. that toe hit the ground, it can't move. So you yeah. you are pinned to that spot. All right, Helga, you had something. Um, I've got a couple things on this one, actually. Um, so one, after you guys tangled, um, and excuse me for being a little harsh on that, it's just, that is one of those ones where I'm just like, ah, you could have done that so prettier. No, um, you weren't harsh at all. It's okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, is that you can watch Felix's fight change in this process of how he is now presenting himself to you. He is not presenting a flat surface for you to do that again. Um, I actually think that this jump was a desperation move that you have now taken all your tools out of the box and you went fuck none of these worked and Gotta so you do just like <laughs> threw the box at him and that this is what ended up happening um but there's two consistent fighting things that i'm seeing occur in this as we're going through in slow motion one your stance is wide but very very narrow so it's very deep and you're basically standing toe to heel this is only allowing you to move forward or backwards or fall to the side. You cannot step to the side and maintain balance. This is the reason why we saw your hip out of place and that you're not being able to generate a second intention in the fight is because your feet are always trying to catch up with your upper body. You are way, way just, you're right on top of each other. 
Um, so that's going to be a, that's going to be a thing that I'm going to tell you that you really, you're going to want to work on, on the Pell and then at practice is actually stepping out shoulder width apart with one lead foot for a little while and just practice those basics, go back to the basics for a little while. The second thing, ever since you guys tangled up, you have never actually thrown at him. You have only thrown at his shield. You can watch everything is coming in an inch and a quarter underneath the lip of his shield where your sweet spot is. And it's not him doing it. It's you doing it. You've actually given up the fight here. Like this is one thing worth throwing for throwing sake and not, not making anything because you're throwing right into his shield. Okay. Yep. So you can, you can actually see it in. What was that? What was what is that? That's an interesting thought for. So, what is the what are you seeing that tells you that's what I'm doing? Well, he's not uh, moving his shield. He he's not having to move his shield to cover himself. Really, I mean, there's a couple times where he has to do big blocks, but a, a lot of them, like he can just stay in guard, and mm -hmm. and he's covered. Like, I mean, you know, he, he moved some there, but... Oh, that was sorry. I hit the wrong button. So you can actually see it here. So if you look at the sweet... I, I'm pointing at my screen like you guys can see this at all. <laughs> Usually. Uh, so there's a rule. If your hand can't see them, so if your basket hilt can't see them, you can't hit them. Because we fight with a straight stick. There is there is no physics on the world unless you have a dead stick that you're actually going to hit them with this. Your hand is no longer breaking the plane of his shield at any moment in time, which is speaking to you fighting against the shield versus fighting against him. You're not aiming at him. You're aiming at his shield because your hand is never lifting above it. You're never coming parallel to the ground. You're never coming parallel to the edge of any of his shields. So this is what I'm seeing. And this is this is actually something that I look for when I'm working with my squires because uh, one of my squires fights the tools. He does not fight the person. Uh, and that is what I am. That's what I'm seeing more and more as this fight's fight is developing is you are hyper, you're starting to like, your brain has decided to hyper focus on his shield is like, that's the bad thing. That's the thing I need to kill. Huh. That's cool. Okay. When again, it goes, it goes back to that pre-programming the fight where you decided how, what was going to happen. And then you launch into that. And the biggest danger in that is when you decide how the fight is going to go, you can't change that. Yeah. Right. You can't make modifications to that as opposed to establish range, identify a target, execute that target, and then take what is given to you from that first shot. Does that make sense? Oh, sure. Yes. Thank you. All right. How do you want to finish this up? Yeah, he caught you on that leg shot because your shield went behind you as you jumped, right? right? Yeah. And and you threw this like high shot, but then your other leg hit first, your left leg hit first, which pins you to the ground. As all you had to do was just follow it in. Yeah, Felix actually hit that while your right leg was still in the air. Yeah, exactly. It hadn't even hit the ground yet, and so he was like, he's what he did was he saw the opportunity from what was presented to him, and he fired at it, right? Um, and then yeah. as he stepped back. So he, he fired and he stepped back. All he did was step back, which created a basically moved where his shield is by him phasing out of your range. And that's why when Helga said that you attack the shield is because this shot goes straight into the shield. Right. Um, yeah. Instead of saying, where is he at? What you did was you fired into like a zone and all he had to do was just step back. And also, and also along with that. So you threw the offside. And then as you're coming as you're coming down, you end up throwing a, a shot that ends up hitting uh, hitting him uh, at the top of the shield, right? Yeah. But the second shot you threw at his head was based on target recognition. You saw an actual target as you right. were coming down off of right. that. You were obviously not in in a position to have the mechanics to put behind that. But so you throw the one that you wanted that didn't work, and as you're coming off, you're like, "Oh shit, shot!" And you like you throw something out there. You you weren't in a position to to to, to you, you didn't have the mechanics like to throw at seconds. that, but you saw it. What was that, Thorpe? Yeah, that's rewind like ten seconds right before he throws this this last shot. I want to see what Felix thought 
Okay, so Felix comes in at standard guard. You've got a bit of a high guard, and he wants to do this offside body here. So that's a shot that Thorfinn, that, that Felix throws a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Usually throws it at the offside leg. Um, okay. it's, a, it's a very range. It, it's a deep, deep and, range and he offside. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he tries, to, tries to throw it from range to try to get it in. Um, and it's obviously he's had some success with that, but that's, that's something he does a lot. So I have to ask, are you hip? Um, no, no, you just, you just got hit in the leg. Okay. But also, but also Sagan, just uh, as square as you can be to him. And he jumps right in the middle of it. Yeah, this is that that is a like we talked about with um, Thomas is that by presenting himself square like that it allows him to have much more targets. And once he can get past the edge of that shield, because of your kingdom's conventions where the the person can kind of stand there and just wail on you uh, yeah. chest to chest, which we don't have out here, um, uh, allows him to do that. Okay, so you need to make sure that you are covering yourself by obliquing yourself out. And certainly once he got started, he wasn't going to let up. No, yeah. there was no way. Once he, <laughs> he, let, just, he jumps in and starts wailing. Yeah, once he got <laughs> inside of that shield, uh, he was going to just stay there. Right. I could well, tell. he dropped in right dead center and then worked to the sword side. Yep. So he, yeah, took, he took the offense away. Yeah, well, he, totally. All right. Uh, Helga? Uh, so this is a classic example. If you move on your knees and face the threat, you would have shut down any of them without having to move your, sword, uh, move your sword or stick. All you had to do is move your knees and face, 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 and, and just meet everything with a, a static defense. And he would have thrown right into the static defense because everything that he just did relied on you staying planted and him rolling around it with your shield reacting to his movement, not your body. Absolutely. Yeah. Once, once, like I said, once he broke past that plane of the shield, oh, and, yeah. and he, I mean, he was in the happy hunting ground. I mean, you can't block because <laughs> he's got the, he's got you know your shields wrapped around him, and, yeah. and he just got to keep swinging. And he and like I said, according to your kingdom rules, he's allowed to take a su- substantial step around the back of you. And so, that's he took advantage of the of that, and it paid off well for him. <laughs> um, but but again, if you would have like like everyone was saying here earlier, if you face your opponent or. It doesn't, you can't even face the other way, but you have to make sure that you're not square. You're oblique. You're giving your your opponent less uh, uh, mm-hmm. target. Yep. All right. So um, we're, we're running a little bit over here, but uh, so let's, uh, let's say again, you want to start with your uh, three things you have for Zygmunt? Well, yeah. Number, number one, again, you know, as we talked about, be in the fight mentally and physically. Okay. I understand that, that from, from what you said, as soon as that first fight ensued, you coming onto the field were already out of it mentally. All right, so that's one thing to take away as, as a lesson learned. Again, we're talking about if you lose, don't lose the lesson. You know, again, now that you've had this experience, you'll be able to deal with that better. Oh yeah. yeah. Right? Because, you know, object lessons really do teach best. Okay, number two, combat Combat is performing as trained and practiced. So in your training and practice, realize that as you go through it, my intent is to bring this into combat. So when you go through training and especially practice, practice as much as possible should absolutely be about crown finals, right? You can hone things in practice, but you can also train things in practice. But mentally, go ahead, take it on. I am going to perform in this practice as if, you know, I'm in crown, you know, and, and take that lesson, run with it. And then number three, we, we, we looked at this one. We all got to look at this one with you. Thank you for sharing. Um, I, th- I think uh, we have presented you with enough information and, and a lot of it you already knew. But thank you again and keep right on going. Yeah. Dorfin. Okay, I actually have a, I think four, but uh, <laughs> number one is is really work on that focus drill. Okay, and so that way it doesn't yeah. matter where you're at or what fight you're in. Um, you're it's every fight should be like a fight of fighter practice. 
right? To you uh, stress-wise, right? Nothing, no big deal. As soon as you can get to that point, you'd be surprised what it allows you to open up inside of your fighting, right? Okay, so number one is really, and like whatever that is, if it's doing that kind of swirly salute you talked about or, or whatever, um, I've gone through two, several phases. I had to start off because I liked my friends so much, I was scared to hit him with a stick. So I literally had a, fa a phrase, I would say like, fuck that guy, right? And because I knew that Alden was going to hit me in the neck or in the groin or something, <laughs> and he wasn't going to care, right? Nope. So what I had to say to myself was, well, fuck that guy, I'm going to hit him first, right? And so I had to learn to, 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 that was my first focus. And then after that, I did this whole kind of like nutty one that is just my central focus. Zoom. Now, number two, um, start working on footwork and, and, and remembering to move on the balls of your feet, right? Always be able to be moving in any direction. This is how you can, when we talked about uh, you were losing your power generation, it's because you're not able to move to where you're you can load those things right so everything has to come up all the time it comes from the ground up and and that'll change everything for you because if if you are preloading your blows by when you throw them right like his grace sean was saying is like let's say the sword comes off this way now you you know you can automatically come back this this direction right because you've preloaded your power boom boom you can continuously flow um learn to feel how your sword works Okay, so when they were talking, we were talking about you were hitting things, but uh, there's a recoil. Like when, like, just go out and take your sword, balance it in your hand like this, and just practice touching it. Like you can feel the spring, right? That spring alone will allow you to preload another attack, right? Feel that power, right? So how your sword moves, you can you can feel those little things just by just tapping it on things. Like, okay, I got it. Okay, and then that, from there you can now, oh, I can go to here or wherever. And the other thing is, how do you get good at something? Keep doing it, right? And so what I'm saying is go to smaller tournaments. Go to a place where you can apply these things we're talking about and actually make them real time for you. So where other guys are at practice, you can also go to that weekend, you can go to a tournament. And, you know, and then now you have tournament experience. All the time that you can add to that tournament experience, you start to shed all of these problems we talked about, like focus and all these other things. Okay, so go to those small tournaments and absorb uh, what you can from that, but apply everything you're trying to learn at those small tournaments. Okay, uh, great fights. Honestly, I mean, I wouldn't be talking to a guy who went to the finals of a crown if you didn't have a good set of fights. Um, but, you know, you got some space to learn. And oh, sure. thank you for letting me analyze your videos. All right, have a good uh, so my three things, uh, you need to go back to your basics on your footwork. It's going to just, it's, you're going to watch a lot of your problems fall away when this is addressed, because it's going to give you a better platform to go back to playing, go back to redeveloping some of your fight. Uh, the second one, just because force is applied does not mean force should be met. Um, that I think is going to be your biggest lesson over the next couple of years fighting is you're fighting very strong right now and you're fighting very upper body strong because you're probably used to being able to kind of like push around some of your opponents and like get in their face and they back off and give you and give you space. Um, you need to set aside that tool completely for a little while. You need to stop fighting like you're strong for a little while and give yourself the ability to have force thrown at you and you redirect it and reuse it. Um, again, this is gonna this is gonna pile right on top of footwork. You cannot do the second one without the footwork, otherwise you're gonna fall right over yourself because you're gonna do a lot of lateral motion with this and a lot of redirecting how they're facing you, and you're gonna learn how to push their shoulders. It's a lot of uh, if you've ever been in a round pen with a horse, it's a lot like working a horse in a round pen. I'm going to apply pressure and see what you do, and then you're I'm gonna learn how to get you to give me what I want. Um, because you can't convince a 1,200 pound animal to do what you want with force. Um, so the third thing is I'm going to say the, again, it's going to be back to basics while you're on the Pell or while you're at fighting, I want you to look at where your hand position is and where your target is actually going. Um, this again, applied with footwork and applied with, you know, moving force around without meeting force. You're going to discover that I bet you when you start looking at your hand and lifting your hand in the fight and getting to parallel with their shield and looking at the lanes that you're throwing in. Oh, I just came up with a fourth thing, damn it, sorry. Um, this is, this is going to help you develop. With all three of these tools, this is the biggest application that you can put them in. You need to start looking at your opponent. 
right now you are fighting with all of your toolbox without assessing their toolbox. And this is going to be the greatest thing. So this is where like, um, and this is not meant in a derogatory way, but fighting down is actually going to help you because you need to go fight some opponents that are not as much of a threat as Felix is to you. So you can look at them. You can look at where the damage is on the stick. You can look at their damage on their shield. You can look at where their armor's beat up. You can look at the targets they're presenting when they break range. You need to look at those tools and start being able to see them in your opponent so you know which tool to pick out of your toolbox and use. This is a 100% a, a mental exercise of playing at practice and giving yourself the vision to see what's in front of you. Because right now, I think that's actually the biggest thing you're lacking. However, those other three tools also need to be downloaded so you can apply this last tool. That would be, and I want to say thank you so much. I was pretty, I, I came at you pretty hard about a couple things and you took it with a big smile on your face. And so I just want to say thank you so much for letting us do this and just being an amazing sport the entire time when I was like, can you, can you stop being two, two bulls fighting over a cow? That'd be great. Like, <laughs> hard pass. Like, you're more elegant than this. Let's get back to that. Was, was that old joke? Uh, you know, how about we walk down there and fuck all? All right. Yep. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to wrap up with, uh, basically two things, uh, that, that have been covered pretty extensively here that I think are, are going to sum up. So, um, footwork and headwork, basically, um, your footwork, the thing I would say about it is, is that, that, that the others have kind of mentioned here is your footwork needs to be deliberate and purposeful right now. Your footwork is, uh, it's kind of the tail wagging the dog, right? Your, your footwork is incidental. Um, and it needs to be deliberate. It needs to be purposeful. You need to you need to drive with the with the footwork. Concentrate on using your footwork to put yourself in a position, and then allow the shot to develop from there, rather than deciding the shot you're going to throw and then trying to make footwork match that. Does that make sense? It's it starts with footwork. So. Um, put yourself in a position and then let the shots happen and that gets to the headwork part which is allowing the fight to to happen natural and organically find that natural return path um because like i said you're you are seeing things you're just seeing them too late and you're and, and what you are seeing you don't have the the shooting platform to support uh what you see so again if you use the footwork deliberately and purposefully and put yourself in position when something goes wrong, you are in a position to execute what you are already seeing. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, totally. Right on. Totally. So, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much what we have for you. Um, we'd One like to thank. Thing. No, go ahead, Sagan. Was there anything we said or described that did not make sense? Uh, not right now. Um, I'm gonna watch the end and process it. And if, um, if I have any more questions, I'll reach out to whoever I have the question for. If you will indulge me, I would appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so that's just how my Absolutely. brain works. Um, and finally, I would like to thank all of my brother and sister peers here for all of the free advice that you get, you've given me and us. I really do greatly appreciate all the time you've invested us. So thank you very much. Our pleasure. Right on. Well, uh, we would like to thank everybody out there in Facebook Landia for joining us. Um, really appreciate all the comments uh, in the in the thread, um, especially the snarky ones. Uh, that's always good times. Uh, appreciate the other comments from from some of our other royal peers out there and some of our coaches. Um, we definitely recommend Thomas and uh, Zygmunt definitely go back through the uh, through the feed here and look look through the comments that are on there. You're, you're probably going to find some stuff that that may resonate with you as well. Um, so. Otherwise, uh, thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, see Friday night, uh, Friday night on the coach's corner. Uh, what do we have coming up? Thorfinn, do you know? I don't Is remember. That the, I'm not in that one. I don't think. <laughs> so. I, I think we're starting in on the, uh, the coaching series. Um, we are doing a kind of a three part series on, um, what it, what it means to be a coach, a trainer and a teacher, uh, in our sport. Um, and, and that, we found that there was enough information in there that we really had to break that up into three different three different episodes. Yeah, uh, Sagan, you're on that one Friday, right? 
Right. Yeah. So I think this first one, we're going to be talking about the differences between a coach, a, a, a teacher, a coach and a trainer and how how those things uh, relate to what we do and your role in that and your evolving role in that. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to have a brass hat to be able to teach something, somebody uh, what you know. So um, we're, we're going to get a little bit more into um, how to how to develop your training skills uh, to help yourself and other fighters so that's coming up uh this friday so definitely uh have everybody tune in for that and uh thanks again everybody for joining us uh, have a good night night, night all.